Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to help your users resize the objects within your prototypes. As you can see on my prototype, I have a few objects right now, which is basically they're just squares. We were going to display some sort of icon that it's, you know, that we can actually resize it and then allow users to, let's say, drag and, and enhance, let's say, stretch it or, you know, collapse it. And I'm going to show exactly how it's done. It's one of those uh, type of things where let's say you, you never know where you might require it it's going to be rare that's for sure but it's definitely a useful skill to know a useful way to use action to do so so without further ado let's jump ahead and let's do this um first and foremost as usual we're gonna need to of course make a dynamic panel out of the object so let's say this object is dynamic panel and i'm gonna give it a name let's fresh block for whatever reason and you know in our prototype i can just modify it as a wish our users however are not going to be able to modify it just yet so once that's done i'm just going to go ahead inside and just so you, it's clear to you i'm going to place an image inside and as you can see it's quite large but that's totally fine we can maybe position it something like so so if the users like resize it by the corner let's say we allow them to make it that big right you could even make it bigger if you wish but i'm just gonna keep it at that i'm just gonna position it right and close it and as you can see imagine that all the other objects are quite similar and now once the user mouse is over it we want to display some sort of indicator that we can actually stretch it let's say right so next i'm gonna add an indicator and by that i just mean i'm gonna drag in some sort of icon like so but as you can see, now we have just a dynamic panel. We have an image inside, but this is always visible. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna go ahead, could actually even put it inside the image like so, so it makes sense. And I would just go ahead and create dynamic panel and call it resize CTA, so call to action. And let's hide it. We don't need it uh, for now at least. And next, how we're gonna make it shown is we're gonna go to interactions and new interaction and we're gonna say on mouse over or mouse enter we're gonna say show resize CTA right away and another action on mouse away so mouse out we're gonna hide it just simply like so and now if we preview you're gonna see that we are gonna have that effect so now it shows or hides the little arrow, but nothing else, you know, it doesn't allow us to do anything with it yet. And next step, what we're gonna do is actually make it stretchable and draggable, uh, stretchable on, let's say, or let's say users are able to reduce the size of a block. New interaction, we're gonna find that on drag, we're gonna say it set size. So if I scroll down, you're gonna find set size, which we mentioned in the previous videos. Check it out. I think it's a good understanding of set size action. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and select our stretch block. And here, we're gonna be able to dictate exactly to what size. Now at the moment, it's all, as you can see, manual. It's the current size. I could just say 300 to let's say 500 or something like that, random value. And if I preview it, you're gonna see once I drag, it's just gonna automatically resize it, boom, right? It's not ideal, it's not great. But what we can do next is actually edit those values. So as you can see, it's anchored on the left uh, top hand side. If I would say from center, then it would expand all to all sides instead of just uh, one direction diagonally. But the most important bit here is the function. Because if you remember from my previous video, we would need to self set it and tell it to, let's say, position it to um, the end of a cursor or something like it, or where, where does the cursor go? And let me show you how it's done. So I would go to functions, delete that numeric value, we don't need it, and just find cursor and then X coordinate because this is a width. So basically if a cursor coordinate is 600 pixels, that's how big it's going to be resized to. We are going to also define it for the height. And you're going to see that I'm not being right here, but I just wanted to demonstrate exactly how to fix this because this is going to be crazy type of interaction. But you're going to see that 
it's it's not anything like that. And that's because it added whole x and y axis. And as you can see, I reached out the limit here. But why it didn't work well is because I'm basically saying it. Uh, let me show you again that on drag, just take all this length from the edge of my screen and just make that block that long. And the same is for Y, just make it all that, that long. What we really want to do is calculate it from the edge of a screen and, and then calculate exactly where the position of a cursor is. Meaning, I'm going to go back and in set size, that statement of not drag, I'm going to go back to functions. Now, what we're really looking for is what we're trying to investigate is what is the existing width or height of a panel of that stretch block, plus add exactly how much we drag of a cursor, right? So there are two components. So number one component is just a width of stretch block. That's easy. I'm going to use it as a variable. I'm going to say add local variable, like let's say LVAR one and just say widget and select our stretch block and just use that as a baseline, which is going to be, let's say, maybe 150 pixels or so, right? And then I'm going to just say add and how much do they drag with our cursor? Now I can just go into our insert variable and functions and then look for cursor or actually just scroll down and look for the group and a specific node under the cursor element and select drag X. And that's about it. That's simple as that. Now we're stating that, okay, if it's 150 pixels and I dragged it for 10 pixels, it's going to be 160 pixels. And so please do resize that. And we're going to insert that value here in the function. And for the height, we're going to do exactly the same. So I'm going to add a local variable, select the widget again, stretch block. So LVAR one, and I actually forgot to add width in another one. I need to get back to it. Sorry for that. And then I'm going to say it's plus drag Y. Keep the syntax exactly the same. That's why rather important. And let me just edit the LVAR one dot width. So we're saying widget width. Actually, the other one is height. Now, as I see it, boom. And that should do the trick. So as you can see, one is width. Another one is height. Simple as that. Click OK. And now that's done. Let's see if we allow our users to resize the block. Boom. You see how that goes? Beautiful. Pretty amazing until we reach the, the elements, you know, sizing limits. But if let's say you would resize that photo to an extent or add, you know, a background of sorts, you could just go infinitely. The other thing which is a bit bothering me right now is that that bit which becomes visible is only visible in the corner and it doesn't matter, you know, how big the thing is going to be or how small. So let's say if a user just resizes it too small, now we can't really even see it, the resize icon. So what we can actually do with it we can sort of anchor it to our cursor icon and show it, you know, the movement of a cursor. Um, because you see, it doesn't really matter where users drag it from, it's still going to resize it. So we could attach that to our cursor. It's quite a really easy way to do so, but let me show exactly what I mean. We would need to take it out, out of our dynamic panel. So I'm going to cut it and I'm going to position it back, but on top of it, we're going to say new interaction. And there is thing called page mouse move. And basically it means that whenever the mouse moves, we're going to move it together with our mouse. So I'm going to say move, uh, select our resize CTA. And instead of by, we're going to move it to, and in the functions, we're going to define the cursor X and Y, which I showed you before. So now you're familiar with it. So I'm going to say cursor X, maybe plus five or so. So it's displayed as a hovering thing next to it instead of just under it, it might overlap. And then I'm going to copy the same statement and just edit Y inside it like so. As you can see, it's the same exact statement and click OK. 
and now we just all we need to do is just edit these statements because as you remember our thing was placed inside the panel before and now it's outside so we need to restate it we need to show it again because the structure changed and i'm gonna just hide it if we mouse out and now let's preview it you're gonna see that at the moment it's following our cursor but it's not showing however a moment i'm entering our block it becomes visible like so and if i let's say edit it it's always there as you can see there is a little bit of delay if i drag and, and release it there is some workarounds around it but as you can see it sort of works if i mouse out it's not there if my sin it's there so it does the trick and it does it pretty well and so the users are able to resize the blocks and do whatever they want to do now in next session i'm going to show you how to perform drag and drop features with the same blocks so let's say maybe we're going to allow users not only to resize a block but also drive drag different components around or make flexible masonry grids and things of that nature for now i hope this video was useful as per usual like subscribe Leave a comment down below, share with your friends, and I'll see you next time.